So in my last video, I said something that may have been misinterpreted. You know, I, I think lighting is so important. I, I, it's so important to me that I've made three separate videos on lighting and I made zero videos on flow. So that tells you how important I think lighting is. But um, so just to clarify, proper flow is very important to the health of your Acropora. But I've been putting off a video on flow for several reasons. One of those reasons is because it's kind of difficult to say exactly how much flow is needed. I did watch an older BRS video that recommended somewhere around 40 times display volume turnover per hour for SPS dominated tanks. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the turnover in my tanks. For the 120, I have two MP40s on reef crest mode at 100%, one Tunzi 6105 pulsing from 30 to 70%, one Tunzi 6015 which is at a constant 475 gallons per hour and my return which adds approximately 450 gallons per hour for a whopping sum of 12,305 gallons per hour. This translates to approximately 103 times display volume turnover per hour. But you should keep in mind that that number is assuming that the pumps are going full blast at the same time, which probably only happens maybe a dozen times per hour. For my 140 gallon frag tank, I have one Tunzi 6105 pulsing from 30 to 80 percent, one Tunzi 6095 pulsing at a maximum 100 percent, one Tunzi 6045 at 100 percent, one Tunzi 6015 at 100 percent, and the return pump which adds another 450 gallons per hour. This all adds up to 7330 gallons per hour. Dividing that by the 140 gallons translates to 52 times volume turnover per hour, which is probably closer to what people recommend or run in their tanks. So just for the record, the 52 times in my frag tank is definitely doing the job. However, I just ordered another Tunzi because there are some spots that look like they need more flow. So with that said, I wish to share a different way of evaluating flow, and it's this. For me, I like to see the polyps moving on my acros 90 to 100% of the time. I think that this is a better indicator of adequate flow, especially if you have a mixed tank or only a few acropora. In those cases, just make sure that the few acropora that you have in your tank have their polyps moving most of the time. But if you're starting an SPS dominated tank and you have mostly frags, 40 to 50 times is a good place to start. But just know as things start to grow, you will likely need to increase flow or add more pumps. And a good indicator of when you've hit that point is when you barely notice the polyps moving on your acros. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to discuss some topics related to flow. I believe that occasional strong direct flow helps with polyp extension, and I base this mainly off what I see in the corals that are in direct line of my vortex, which are set at reef crest mode. In the words of Ecotech, reef crest mode simulates the reef crest environment by automatically changing the speed of the pump frequently and drastically. With that said, generally in my 120, the pieces in direct line of the vortex have the best polyp extension, and I believe it's because of that random direct flow. Strong flow tends to make colonies grow unevenly. Let me show you some examples. This Pink Floyd colony for the most part is more dense and has better growth on the side of the vortex. The same thing goes with this Oregon tort colony. No matter how much I keep cutting this branch that is in direct line of the vortex, it keeps growing back there the fastest compared to other parts of the colony. You can also see the same thing in the Superman Millipora colony. Most of the tips are on the side of the vortex. But Millies in general love flow, so there's no surprise there. Check out this Cali Tort colony. It is getting hit by a rotating Tunzi on a C sweep. It's pretty close to the pump, and I don't think that it likes it because the side that's facing the pump has formed sort of a concave baseball glove type of appearance, while the other side looks normal. On the other hand, I would say that most corals that are not in direct line of a pump grow more evenly in general. In my experience, the undersides of sideways growing or tabling corals will look healthier if the bottom is getting good flow. It's just something that I noticed in my tanks, the parts of the colonies that don't get hit with good light tend to become lighter, unless there's good flow hitting that spot. If your acros aren't getting adequate flow, their color and growth will suffer in my experience. 
This is the reason I recently stuck this little Tunzi up here. This RR Firecracker colony and this Garf Bonsai colony were definitely looking dull after I swapped the Sea Sweep on this side for the Wave Box. But after adding that pump a couple of months ago, their color is definitely coming back. When you buy pumps, you really get what you pay for. The reason I say this is because I've had these Vortex and Tunzies for about 10 years now. The wet sides of the Vortex did need replacement, but I do feel that the Vortex have the best flow pattern. The Tunzies are very reliable and never had a problem or had to replace any part of them. So just some quick comments about wave boxes and sea sweeps. I do love my wave boxes. They effortlessly produce this nice rocking pattern, which is really cool for those aggros that have nice polyp extension. It also helps with dead spots and helps keep detritus from settling. So if you're okay with how big they are, they are a great supplemental flow in your tank. Sea sweeps are also awesome in that they provide random flow from a different direction. That's something that you cannot get from any other pump since they are stuck in one spot facing the same direction. Sea sweeps are expensive, but they are built like tanks. My sea swirl and sea sweeps have been going for about 10 years now, and though I never had to service mine, I hear the customer service is great if you do happen to run into problems. Well, alright guys, that's going to do it for this video. As always, please let me know what you think in the comments below, and thank you for making it this far. Until next time, boom! I'm out.